Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We're reading 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly well that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Now, before we go into anything literal, Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. Sleep and slumber is like a form of lethargy, a form of listlessness. Uh, uh, it's, it's almost like people walking through with their, with their heads up in the clouds. They have no clue that there are guns being aimed at them. They have no clue that robbers just entered the bank because they're so in their little world, they're asleep. They're like the walking sleep. In a, in, a, in a lifestyle of a stupor. Yeah, not stupid, stupor. All right. So, so that's what it means when it says, for they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But it's not a literal thing. There are just people who live a lifestyle, a night lifestyle, all day long. They're drunk or they're out of it. They have no clue what's going on around them. All right, so now we are moving on to verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together, and edify one another, even as also ye do. And our group does that big time, don't we, you guys? And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Now, we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. No matter how impatient we tend to be, if we feel impatient, the best thing to do is get off the phone. But don't attack a person because you're feeling impatient. Don't be short with them because your love tank is low. That's not their fault. All right. So, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ concerning you. All right. Quench not the Holy Spirit, despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good, and abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Now let me go back. Let's backtrack a little bit where it says, know them that labor among you. You know, one thing that confuses the body of Christ more than anything else is we have a lot of YouTubers all over the place. They got prophecies, they got dreams, they got visions, they got uh, uh, gossip, they got the grapevine, they got everything under the sun, they got the word, they got another dream, they got another. All right, we have to be careful because there are times 
If I look back at two or three years ago, some of the dreams and visions that people have had, it was like, it's got to happen. There's no way that's not going to happen. Those dreams have come and gone, and not hardly any of them have come true. So what we end up doing is we live our lives by the prophecies online, by the words online, by the scuttlebutt online, by the beliefs. They come and go. Nothing happens. Not saying none of them will happen. But saying we need to really doss that baby in prayer. And we need to spend more time reading the word than listening to what all these people say. We don't know what, what happens when that screen goes off. We don't know anything about those people, but their reputation. And there are many people out there who have had wonderful, phenomenal reputations, only to find out they've been living like a heathen all this time, when God exposes them. So I always say, be careful who feeds you. Be careful who puts that spoon in your mouth. That silver spoon may not be silver at all. Mm -hmm. maybe costume coating. So be very careful. Not everything that glitters is gold. And there are times when I have found, and to my own shock, that some of the people that I listened to for a long time and I thought they were wonderful, I found out after a while something came up out of the woodwork that they exposed on their own and didn't realize they told on themselves. And I'm looking at them saying, they are caught up in witchcraft, the occult, crystals, all kind of crap. So we have to be careful who we allow to shove their spoon of gospel in our mouths. We have to be careful. Some people just want to be heard. Some people need to feel important. Some people sensationalize everything bad that's coming down the pipe. And some people create scenes that God didn't tell them, but they've heard enough news and enough scuttlebutt around that they could kind of put two and two together. Some things we don't need the gift of prophecy to know what's coming. Just listen to ABC News, CNN, and listen to the news guys on, on YouTube. If you catch it early enough before the populace catches it, and then you dish it out as a word of prophecy, and it comes true, woo, folks get impressed. I've seen things coming down the pipe. I didn't even bother making a big deal out of it. I knew it wasn't a word of prophecy. I knew it was based on what I could see. I could see it. The writing was on the wall. I didn't need the Holy Ghost to tell me that. I could see it. So what I'm trying to tell you is there are times that you will see a lot of people online. You're going to see more and more of it. You're going to start seeing, and this is what you have to be careful of. You're going to start seeing, this is a warning. You're going to start seeing not only prophesying, it's going to be mixed with prophesying. It's also going to be mixed with medium activity, with psychic phenomena. Yeah, and I ain't talking about just having ESP as a gift. I'm talking about the psychics that are, are fortune-telling. They're not uh, forth-telling. They're not uh, foretelling as a prophet. They're fortune-telling, thinking that they're coming under the guise of a prophet. You see, we as Christians, we love the supernatural, so we have to be careful. That's a quick warning. Now, we know that Jesus is coming. Of course, we don't know when. This is going to be short. But my main thing I want to I want to caution you in is just like we talked about earlier before everybody came on. There are demons out there that are being unleashed into the atmosphere. And this is what we have to be very careful of. Let me say this to you. If you find yourself feeling dizzy, feeling disoriented, feeling like you can't quite get your thoughts together. Like It may be a mixture of 5G and demonic activity because witches are praying that crap into the atmosphere. 
you have to attack it. It's almost like you can hit and miss or you can hit and do some damage. When you feel that, that is a form of confusion. Rebuke and say this out of your mouth. I rebuke the spirit of confusion in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of insanity in the name of Jesus. You feel disoriented? I rebuke the spirit of disorientation in the name of Jesus. And then quote the word over your mind. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Quote the word over your mind. Quote the word over your heart, over your body. When my heart was doing palpitations like crazy, I knew it was one or two things. Either a demonic or one or three things. A demonic attack, a physical malfunction, or um, a lack of magnesium. So I covered all three. I started taking magnesium. I started uh, rebuking heart attack and commanding my heart to beat regularly. And I would rebuke demonic attacks on my body and on my heart in the name of Jesus. So you have to, well, just in case you don't know or you haven't had much experience, some of you on YouTube, when you're dealing with the demonic, they tell on who they are by what they do. Demons are very characteristic to their name. If you have a demon of jealousy, you will find yourself feeling jealous. If you, and I'm not saying you have it. I'm just saying if you're being attacked by a demon of jealousy. If you're being attacked by, by depression and and you're feeling like, what's the use? There's no need in living. And, oh, it's all a waste. It's a, you know, rebuke the spirit of depression and discouragement. If you start getting the idea and thoughts, these are, these are for all of you. Some of you who are not saved. You got saved folks in your family. Tell them that you're feeling suicidal. And ask them to rebuke the spirit of suicide. And you start thinking about giving your heart to the Lord. When you start feeling like you want to kill yourself. See, all these things are going on. That's why the Bible reminds us not to be sleep. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Be aware. Don't walk around. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Oh, this lollipop is good. I'm going to the movies. And all hell is breaking loose around you. And you're so out of it. You don't even know what's going on. You don't even have enough sense to duck. Because you don't see it coming. There are things coming. And a lot of you don't see it coming. Because you're buried in your selfies. You're buried in your cell phones. You're in La La Land. And in your mind, you're hearing peace, safety, peace, safety. No, sudden destruction comes on your behind. You're going to be squatting on the ground wondering, well, what do I do? Well, what happened? It was coming all the time. But you never saw the writing on the wall because you were too busy playing and caught up in La La Land. You cannot be asleep. You are children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. That's what we need to be doing in these last days. And here's another thing I want to tell you, you guys. I got about three calls this week from three different people. Some of you are right on the precipice of experiencing the presence of God, the glory of God. And what do you do? You get excited because you feel something different and you start calling people. What you calling people for? God is right there getting ready to do something with you and you trying to tap into people. They can't do squat. You're right there. What are you interrupting this for? That's a 
as bad. Well, this is not as bad because this is on a fleshly level. But think of a husband and wife in the bed making love. And the wife or the husband jumps up and interrupts the most beautiful, passionate moment that could actually shift their marriage into a better direction. But no, it's time for the Lakers. So you jump up, you grab the remote, and you turn on the Lakers and you start watching it. Neither one of y'all have finished what you're doing, but you can't miss the Lakers. Well, some of you do that with God. You get this close to God. You're getting ready to part the veil, the psychological veil. Getting ready to part that veil and you're getting ready to touch God, touch his bosom. You're getting ready to touch him heart to heart, be touched by him. Oh my goodness, I feel God all around me. And what do you do? What do I do? I'm feeling something different. Get off the phone and continue with God. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay, let me stop there. But yeah, I have had a number of those calls this week. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, I want to say what you calling me for. God is right there. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say to you is we are so used to wanting that instant touch, that instant answer, that instant solution. We don't want to wait before God. Do you know most of the time when you're going to experience God is going to be when you're doing something you really don't feel like doing? You're not even feeling all that spiritual, but God honors your faithfulness and your effort? Oh, not only that, but at the times when you're just sitting there fighting sleep and you're trying to pursue God, but you're tired and you're, you're trying to pursue let me tell you, babe, when God shows up, you ain't tired no more. Mm-hmm. When God shows up, you ain't got a question. Is this God or is this Memorex? You don't have to question everything in your fiber. God says, my children know my voice. No, they don't have to guess at it. They don't have to wonder, ponder, try to analyze it. No, my children know my voice. So when you experience God's presence, or his voice. You know it. You know who you're hearing from. Now, what I want to say to you in these last days, all right, you have to be very, very careful. Because one of the things Satan will do, verse 9, I'm going verse by verse, kind of. One of the things Satan will do, one of his tricks, is to make you start going off on each other. Make you start annoying one another. Start getting on each other's nerves. Start, start being bothered by each other. You got to be careful with that. Because sometimes we will respond. Listen, there are times when Satan can try to get in the mix. And it ain't you that's bothered by the person. It's Satan because he doesn't want y'all to be closely knit together. So he starts stirring up these negative emotions. Next thing you know, y'all don't want to talk to each other. Next thing you know, oh, I hope they're not going to be online when we have church. That's the spirit of division. Rebuke it. Don't buy into it. Rebuke it. Trash it. Kick it to the curb. I'm just basically nitpicking at the different things that this particular verse is tapping on. But we are to comfort one another. Not avoid one another. Comfort one another. Edify one another. You hear me? And again, I admonish you. Whoever you put yourself up under you to, know them that labor among you. You get up here online and hear these people shouting and talking all churchified and sounding exciting and it's invigorating to hear some of it. And it may only be 10% of it that's anointed and the rest of it is them because they know the church jargon. 
They know the rhythm. They know how to get the thing, the momentum going. Yeah. I mean, I could sit up here and, and I get you all hyped up. Ugh, God's getting ready to do something, y'all. You feel it? Oh, I feel it in my spirit, y'all. Oh, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost all around me. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, oh, you got to feel it, y'all. Give me a hand. Put your hand on the screen. Let's touch contact. Come on, y'all. Let's go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's enter it together. Hallelujah. And we could just go on and on and, and quote scripture and Get all revved up, and before you know it, everybody feels like they got a shot in the arm. And it could have been 95% hype. I could get all excited and yell and shout, spit and sputter. Have you thinking heaven's about to drop down in my kitchen? And God could be looking at me like, girl, what are you doing? What's all that about? So we have to be very careful. We can't buy into everything. And whatever you do, check it with God. Compare it to the word. Know them that labor among you. All right. Now, I want you to be at peace. I want you to exhort each other and warn one another. And there will be some that come among our midst. I counsel a lot of people through the week. Sometimes I get three, four calls every day. Sometimes I'm done with the phone because I've been on the phone so much. But I'm telling you, there are some people, I think their brains were left in the toilet. Some of the stuff they say. And I'm not saying it to be insulting. What I'm trying to tell you is I have to comfort them. Some of them, they don't even get when I try to make them think of something else. It does not compute. Because there are some people I counsel that are in the category of the feeble-minded or the weak. So I have to be gentle. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we have to be careful how we handle each other. Because as much as we want to think we are all together and we all got it going on, some of us don't. And that's where the discernment of the Spirit comes into play. And it enables us through the wisdom of God to know how to deal with one another. Amen? That's, that's where the wisdom of God and the discernment comes in. That we know how to deal with one another. And when we know we're dealing with someone that has that kind of a problem, then we're, we're a lot more tender. We're a lot sweeter. God will teach us how to handle certain cases. Some people will call you with the same problem over and over and over again. Have you ever worked with developmentally disabled adults? Well, there are some people that just get the biggest kick out of being able to complete a task. you got to celebrate with them even if they've done it for 50 times. And they're just as excited each time. You have to sometimes fake the excitement to make them feel good about themselves. It's just part of the whole ministry. So let's ask God to help us know how to handle one another and how not to mishandle one another. And how to, how to gather together, circle the wagons, and help each other prepare for the second coming of the Lord in every way, shape, and form, okay? It's, 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 it's not an arduous task if we're doing it together. It's not a struggle, not supposed to be a struggle. So don't complicate the simple things of God. And sometimes we do that. We overcomplicate love. We overcomplicate righteousness. We overcomplicate. We want to analyze, well, how do I do this and how do I do that? And just relax. Sit back and enjoy. You don't have to know how the chair was put together. Just sit in the thing. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I hope that relaxes you a little bit and, and gives you a little more insight and comfort. God bless all of you who watch our channel. And God bless our church, God's Church of Love. Amen.